Hello everybody, welcome back. We got acres and acres of ruins to explore today, all locked away in this little forest here behind me. See, hundreds of years ago, the town of Dogtown, Massachusetts used to stand on this spot, which has since been entirely abandoned. It was this ramshackle little 19th century town chock full of crazy characters, cool geographic features, and all sorts of other sweet stuff. I got so many different things I need to show you here, like 30 different sites marked off on my map. So let's get to it. Hey, check it out, we found our first Babson boulder. So I'll give you a little more background info about Dogtown in just a second before we get too deep into the forest. But before I do that, I gotta tell you about these guys cause they're gonna be a common theme of this trip. Uh, there's actually dozens of these rocks all across Dogtown and they all have these pithy little phrases on them like this one carved right into them. So you're gonna be seeing a lot more of these. Uh, you're probably wondering what they are though. Well, back during the Great Depression, this uh, wealthy businessman named Robert Babson used to own a lot of the land that Dogtown stood on. Like you might know Babson as the founder of Babson College and Weber International University. But if you're from Gloucester, then you know him as the guy who commissioned all these big rock pieces. Uh, so when the Great Depression hit in the 30s, Babson decided that he wanted to try and lift the spirits of everyone struggling to get by. So he hired a bunch of out of work stonemasons to come carve a bunch of inspirational quotes into rocks all across the landscape. And 80 or 90 years later today, there's still just a bunch of rocks like these all over Dogtown. We're gonna be seeing them a ton. So I just felt like I had to explain that at the top of the video so you're not confused on why there's a big rock that says truth on it or something in the background of me talking about like an old house. So yeah, let's keep going. I gotta say though, some of these I wouldn't exactly call uplifting. Like, imagine you're some out of work tradesman, you just got laid off, you're struggling to find a way to feed your family, keep food on the table, and you hear about some little uh, beautiful spot out in the woods where somebody carved a bunch of inspirational messages. So you head out into the woods, big grin on your face, looking to get inspired for the hard journey ahead of you. Go down the trail and you see this. And some of them are just kind of weird, like this one. Like I know it's supposed to be help mother as in like help your mother, but I can't help but read it as help mother. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering where all these big rocks came from, including the Babson boulders, they're actually all glacial drop offs So when a glacier was running down through here, it was carrying all these rocks behind them or just pushing them along. And as the glacier traveled or melted, it would just kind of dump these rocks along in its path. So this entire forest is just littered with these guys that probably came from miles and miles away. Oh yeah, I almost forgot the uh, Gloucester commuter rail actually runs through the very edge of the forest where I'm at right now. So gotta make a quick dash across the, the train tracks. It goes over the reservoir here, so I gotta go quick before anyone comes. Okay, it looks like there's nowhere to hide on either side of the thing. If the train does come, I better hustle. <laughs> oh, stay away train, stay away train. Oh, there's the wood. There's the trail, I think. We made it. Oh. Phew. Okay. Back in the woods.
that's where we just were running across right there. So when I was preparing for this video, I spent a lot of time thinking about how I want to present this place, you know? And I decided that instead of starting with the like eight minute long speech at the top of the video, going into detail on every crevice of the history of Dogtown, I thought it would be better to just kind of sit back and let the stories I have prepared and the ruins and the land do the talking for me. Because I feel pretty confident that all these little anecdotes I got for you are gonna be enough to weave a real detailed picture of what Dogtown used to be like. And hey, there's another boulder. But that being said, I feel like I gotta give you at least some basic knowledge on the history of Dogtown, right? Give you a nice little foundation for everything else to stand on. So Dogtown wasn't originally called Dogtown. When it was first established way back in 1693, it was called the Commons Settlement, uh, Gloucester Commons, or sometimes just the Commons. It was about a five square mile little agricultural and industrial village built up on a rocky plateau high above the rest of the landscape. For those first few years, it really thrived. Like wealthy livestock owners kept hundreds of sheep up here. Timber mills dotted the many streams and brooks running through the landscape. And all sorts of craftsmen made their uh, home up here, like blacksmiths and barrel makers and all sorts of stuff. And for a while, it was a really big time town. Like there was a lot of money up on this plateau. But as time passed, that money started to dry up. Industries like fishing and shipping became much more important. So people moved off the plateau and down closer to the harbor. So as a result, as all the money left, the commons up on this rocky outcropping kind of became marooned from the rest of the people living in the area. And as you can probably guess, the local economy and industry really fell apart as the 19th century passed. And it's at this point in the story where the commons died and Dogtown was born out of its ashes. See, so yeah, as the money left, the village just became totally dilapidated and just became this kind of weird little village up in disrepair, up on the top of a rocky plateau, segregated from the rest of Gloucester. And this is where the name Dogtown comes from, because back in the 19th century, Dogtown was kind of like a derogatory phrase used all over the country to describe poor, rundown villages full of societies, economic lower classes. Basically, every region has its own Dogtown, and this was Gloucester's. There's some other legends behind the name, too, like that people started calling the place Dogtown because there are a bunch of Revolutionary War widows here who got dogs to keep them company after their husbands were killed in the war. And that when the village was uh, abandoned, all the local stray dogs and stuff moved into the area. And that's where the name Dogtown comes from. And those could be true, but based on what I've read, I, my opinion is that it's probably just uh, the common name for any kind of village that ended up like this one, but who knows. Anyway, though, this town became a bit of a legend in its region. To the citizens of the much more wealthy coastal area surrounding the plateau, Dogtown was terrifying. Like, ruffians lived up here, criminals, crazy people, undesirables, and worst of all, witches casting spells down from the rocky plateau. And, you know, although that reputation was definitely exaggerated, I'm sure, as you'll see in here, there was no shortage of eccentrics living up here. They all just hung out up here inspiring myth and legend for years until 1830 when the last resident of Dogtown finally left. And I think I'll leave it at that for now. Let's keep going. I'm not sure if it shows up super well on camera or not, but if you can see that the water here is kind of like brownish tinge, almost like a rust color, that's because a lot of the streams and brooks and swamps and stuff in Dogtown are actually full of what is called bog iron, which is iron deposits that can form in like swamps and stuff like that. I don't know too much of the chemistry behind how that happens, but I'm glad I found out about that before I came here, because typically I would just use my water filter 
for drinking water when I'm doing a long trip like this, but I'm not gonna chance drinking any of this. In fact, there's actually a few reservoirs around here that supply water to Gloucester, or at least used to. And back in the 30s, they built some dikes separating this water from the water of the reservoir to keep it from getting infected with the, the rust. By the way, just to give you an idea how big this place is, I got about eight and a half miles mapped out that I'm going to be walking today, not including going off trail a little to find some specific stuff. And still, I'm going to be barely covering like a third of the land area. Oh yeah, one more thing I should probably tell you guys to help get that mental picture going is that all these trees here are new. Back during both the commons and Dogtown days, this area was almost completely bald. Just pasture land and all these boulders sitting around. These trees are new growth forest trees that grew up after the area was abandoned and the pastures were left to grow forest again. Hey, check it out. We made it to the most famous of all the Babson boulders, Spiritual Power. This is definitely the biggest one. And if you're familiar with bouldering, which is a discipline of uh, rock climbing that's focused more on climbing specific little boulders like this one, then you might have heard of this rock if you're from Massachusetts because it's a very popular site for boulderers. I guess they climb it by sticking their fingers right in this big crack right here. And just mosey their way all the way up to the top. Old stone wall. We're going to be seeing a lot more of these. Be on time. And hey, you know what? While you're at it, why don't you do a little studying too? Hey, some of some of Babson's uh, inspirational phrases just seem kind of more like lectures, don't they? If work stops, values decay. Hey, check this out. See this 22 here? This is actually the work of our friend Robert Babson too. See, in addition to doing all his little inspirational phrases, he also took the time to find all of the places where the last residents of Dogtown lived, like where all their homes were, and carve numbers into boulders nearby so that you could find the sites of their houses. Uh, there should be some cellar holes around most of these rocks. I'm looking for it right now because that's really the only thing left of any of these houses is just a big old hole in the ground because the rest of the structure just has been destroyed over time. I can't really see this one anywhere. It looks real overgrown and I don't want to wander off the trail too much because these cellar holes are like, <laughs> like several feet deep and I could just stumble right into them. 
Yeah, we're gonna be talking about a lot of residents of Dogtown and it's thanks to Babson that we know where they lived. Uh, the person who lived here was a guy named Colonel William Pierce. Dang, it's getting stormy. I couldn't really find anything specific about Colonel Pierce. The only thing I really uncovered was that at some point during the war of 1812, a whole bunch of British soldiers spied his sheep flock up on the plateau and ran all the way up here to try and steal them. Dang, Colonel, I'm sorry. You think you could get some protection up among all these boulders, but guess not. By the way, you might've noticed that the trail we're walking on now is like way bigger and not covered in mud and sticks and super overgrown. And that's because what we're walking on now is one of the old roads that went through Dogtown, an old cart path. So it's a lot wider, it's a lot more heavily trafficked and there's a lot more stuff off the side of it. So let's keep going. Hey, look, I didn't write down who lived at 21 here because I couldn't find anything out about them, but I can use them as an example to show you the cellar holes. This one's pretty shallow, it looks like. See the big dip down in here? Looks like it's been filled in quite a bit, but you can see the outline of the rocks along the thing there. And this might be part of their old house right here too. I kind of think not. It looks more like a curve and a stone wall but there's some structure still here, it looks like. The keep out of debt rock actually has a bit of a kind of local custom attached to it. See these coins sitting on all the letters? I promise I did not put those there. According to local tradition, come out to the keep out of debt rock stick a coin on one of the letters it'll help you reach financial prosperity check this out see how there's a huge huge pile of rocks here like way bigger than any of the others we've passed and we're up on a hill too by the way this is because we're standing on Dogtown's terminal moraine, or at least one of them. Uh, remember I said all these rocks are getting pulled around by glaciers? Well, when those glaciers eventually stop, uh, start to melt, or just uh, aren't able to push on anymore, they'll just drop all the rocks that they're carrying in one spot, or push them up in a big wall, basically. And that's what we got here. Look, see? Babson knows what I'm talking about. All right, check this out. See how we're in? Uh, kind of a crossroads right here and a pretty big open area compared to everything else we've been walking through. That's because we're in the Dogtown Square. This was the hub of both the Commons and Dogtown. It looks like Babson marked it out for us too. Dogtown Square. Okay, so I've been looking around here for a while for the number and cellar hole for a person named Granny Day, who used to live here during the Dogtown era. Oh, by the way, I'm just gonna say Dogtown when I'm talking about the, the Dogtown era and Commons when I'm talking about the earlier wealthy era. So you can use that as like a reference point to know what time period I'm talking about. But anyway, Granny Day's house should be around here somewhere. I'm just having trouble finding it, but that's okay. Cause I really wasn't able to find any info about her. The only real reason I wanted to come to this spot was because there's a swamp named for her back in the woods here you probably can't quite see it but according to written record I found this swamp which is now called the granny day swamp was notorious among farmers in the commons era for sucking down hapless sheep and livestock <laughs> they really tried their best to keep their sheep away from here because I guess there's a lot of uh a lot of bones somewhere in that swamp from hapless sheep who wandered a little too far away. Don't think I can get much closer to the swamp than this without demolishing a bunch of the local flora. But you can see where there's a huge opening of trees right up there. That's where the swamp is. Wait, right, here's Granny Day's spot. Old number 20. Here's a pretty crazy one. There's a lot of moss on it, so you can't quite read it, but this says James Mary died 
September 11, maybe, 1892. Now, what this is in reference to is a guy named James Mary who apparently used to keep a bull up on this hill up here well after the Dogtown days, so when this place was basically just totally abandoned. Uh, some of the accounts that I read said that he would come up here with the bull to train to be a matador and would practice, uh, you know, throwing the cape around and everything. And eventually the bull just got sick of that and caught him and gored him to death. And when the townsfolk climbed up the hill and found him here dead with his bull nearby, they just carved this into the rock to mark the spot where he died and, you know, kept on living their lives and the rock's still here. But I gotta say, I'm not super sure about the Matador story because a lot of the older records I found that mention this rock didn't say anything about that. So that might be more of a modern invention. But one thing's for certain, the guy definitely got gored to death right here. Number 18, Isaac Day. Now, Isaac's actually got a pretty crazy story. See, he was an Englishman who was forcibly impressed into the British Army in the run-up to the American Revolution. Uh, then they brought him via warship to North America, where he actually successfully escaped, deserted the army, and then took up residence in hiding here in Gloucester, Massachusetts. At least until the revolution got in a full swing, in which case he right away went and joined up with the Continental Army. During his time in the war, he actually saw a ton of action, fighting in three major battles, culminating for him in the Battle of Yorktown, where he actually got slashed across the throat by a British officer's saber. But he lived, and not just for a little while, he lived long enough to see George Washington in person with his own eyes, accept Cornwallis's surrender. And then not only that, he kept on living, moved back here to Gloucester, Spent the rest of his days right here up on this rocky plateau with that scar ever lining his neck. This is the site of the old Foster house right here. Forget the guy's first name, but that's okay because I'm not here for him. I'm here for his cellar hole, which I think is right here. It looks like they just put the rock right on top of it. I don't see any other depressions anywhere. But apparently during the Dogtown days, a whole bunch of horses got got sick somehow or were injured somehow or something like that. I couldn't really find any more detail than that. And what the residents of Dogtown did was lead them over here, shoot all the horses, take them down to the cellar hole and seal it up. So somewhere under all these dirt and rocks, it's a bunch of horse skeletons. Oh, and by the way, I should probably mention that everyone thinks this place is haunted. You can kind of see why with the amount of the crazy stories that went on in here. Here's another cool one. The house site of Easter Carter, our first resident of the Dogtown period rather than the Commons. Her real name was Esther Carter, but everyone in Dogtown just called her Easter. Easter never married. She lived here by herself, making a living, kind of serving as Dogtown's nurse, taking care of her neighbors whenever they needed her. And Easter also lived in the only two-story house in all of Dogtown. On the second floor of her house lived a free former slave, a woman who the rest of Dogtown affectionately called Old Ruth. Now, Ruth is a real interesting one. Uh, you see, she kind of lived like a double life. She was this big, strong woman who was more than capable of doing physical labor as a way to make a living. But at the time, women weren't really hired for that sort of thing. So whenever Ruth needed to make some cash, she would dress up in men's clothing, descend down from the plateau into Gloucester, and look for work as John Woodman. From what I've read, she actually got a lot of work building all the stone walls you can find dotting the landscape around here. So, who knows? Maybe some of the walls around here were built by old Ruth's hands. Maybe this one. Or I guess actually by John's hands. Okay, I also read that there is some ledge by the Esther Carter old Ruth house that was called Ruth's Ledge that was considered pretty dangerous. I found this big hill right here. This could be it, I guess. It's kind of kind of ledgy. If I was a little boy in Gloucester or Dogtown, I wouldn't want to fall down there. 
Okay, we got a bunch of walking ahead of us now without many landmarks. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity to tell you about some of Dogtown's witches. And you know, I was planning while I was talking about them to show you a bunch of B-roll of the area so you don't have to just look at me. But I'm just standing here and I'm thinking I should probably just point the camera in this direction and just show you what I'm seeing while I'm talking because this place is so pretty that the every single shot I could take is good B-roll, so yeah. So yeah, like I was saying, the witches. Unfortunately, I don't have any old house sites or anything to show you for most of these people because a lot of them actually lived on the outskirts of, of uh, Dogtown in areas that aren't captured within the boundaries of the protected state land that most of this forest is in nowadays. So uh, most of the sites now just have like, like houses or mechanics shops or whatever sitting on top of them. So there's not much left to show you. But that being said, even though most of their physical presence is gone, the legends of these women definitely still persist. Uh, like, like I said earlier, a lot of the residents of the wider Gloucester area were terrified of Dogtown, mostly because of all the witchcraft that was said to take place up here. And you can kind of see why they were scared. Like a lot of Dogtown's women straight up said they were witches and sold witches medicine and threatened to hex people and all sorts of stuff like that. Like there was Daffy Archer who sold a medicine made primarily out of snail mucus. Rachel Rich who sold a concoction made out of spruce and foxberry leaves. And Becky Rich who made money by telling the fortunes of Gloucester's locals using readings from coffee grounds. Some of the witches, though, had quite a bit more sinister reputation, like Peg Wesson, for example. Uh, she had quite the grip of fear over Gloucester, it sounds like. Everyone was worried about her. One famous legend has stuck around to this day. As the story goes, a group of men had been followed and repeatedly bothered by a crow for hours. And they eventually decided that since this crow isn't leaving, it must be Peg Wesson. <laughs> so, they got together a bunch of muskets, loaded them up with silver bullets, and blasted up into the sky at the crow. The crow managed to dodge most of the shots, but was struck in the leg by one of the bullets, causing it to fly away from the men, screeching in pain. Now, as the story goes, later that evening, Peg Wesson called in the town doctor to help her with an injury. After the doctor spent hours and hours in Peg's house, digging at her leg, he finally came out the door triumphantly, held up his hand, and between those fingers that had just been worked to the bone was a silver bullet pulled from the leg of Peg Wesson. Now, despite all these stories and uh, all these other notorious witches, one woman stood above the others as the most feared witch in Dogtown. They called her the Queen of Witches, Thomasine, Tammy Younger. There's so many stories about Tammy Younger. Like it literally sounds like she had this kind of reign of terror over the people living here. Uh, apparently she lived in this old like collapsing house on the one main road that led through Dogtown on route to Gloucester. So whenever someone came by, she would throw open the shutters and start screaming threats and obscenities and all sorts of stuff, claiming that she would curse them if they didn't leave her some kind of offering. She lived right at the base of, the, of a real steep hill too. So people would be struggling to drive oxen up the hill and they've got Tammy just hanging her head out the window, going to town on them, right? So more times than not, the traveler would just chuck her a piece of corn or something to keep the hexes away. And eventually it got to the point where it just became common knowledge that if you were gonna go this way through Dogtown, you needed to have something ready to appease Tammy lest you suffer the fate of her curses. Uh, Tammy also lived with her aunt, Luce George, who proclaimed to be a witch too. Uh, Luce would go down to the docks in the harbor and threaten hexes on the fishermen until they offered up some of their catch. Now, I'm not gonna go through every single legend there is about Tammy because we'd be here all day. Oh, and by the way, it's really pouring now. <laughs> but I will tell you one legend that I particularly like. You see, uh, Tammy evidently had these big, like long canine teeth which uh, according to legend were an inch long each. Uh, really added to her freaky appearance, I'm sure. Uh, but one day she got tired of dragging these long teeth around and eating the corn and fish that she extorted from local travelers. So she went up to the local cobbler's shop, uh, had the cobbler take his pliers, 
grab onto the teeth and just start yanking. But as the cobbler yanked and yanked and yanked, the teeth just wouldn't come. They just kept pulling further and further out of her face until eventually they gave up with Tanny, Tammy's big old canine teeth sticking out even further than before. And I think that's a good place to stop talking about witches. I found this concrete barricade. <laughs> this could be something related to the dikes that I was talking about earlier that were meant to keep the iron water out of the reservoir. Maybe not though. This kind of looks like a riverbed, so maybe this was a dam even. Who knows? Check this out. This is the reservoir I was just talking about and some of the surrounding swampland. All these maple trees look so good right now. Hey, if you're ever shooting on a rainy day like this, uh, make sure you employ this old scuba divers trick that I learned. If your lens gets a bunch of water droplets on it, just give it a lick. Something about saliva, I guess, wicks the water away. I've probably licked my camera about eh, 120 times so far. Check it out, here's the shoreline of the main reservoir. See the dam over there? Right here is the remnants of what used to be called the Commons Road back during the Gloucester Commons day. Just come down right here, go down there. It's since been totally destroyed and filled in by the reservoir, which is just on the other side of this thicket here. Down there used to live the cobbler who I was talking about in that Tammy story. Uh, apparently he called his shop his boo. Alright, so I couldn't find the number, but tucked away against these couple of boulders here used to be the house of Judy Rhines, uh, another one of Dogtown's witches. She mostly made her living telling fortunes and picking berries, but uh, along with a couple other women we'll get to later, she also worked as a prostitute here in Dogtown, turning this little stretch of road into Dogtown's red light district. After Judy Rhines, though, another man lived in this house, a free black man named Cornelius Finson, who everyone just called Black Neil. And uh, Black Neil was actually the last person to ever live in Dogtown. He made his home here in Judy's old house till the roof caved in, at which point he just moved down into the cellar, which would have been right here. You can just barely see the depression in person. But yeah, he lived in this cellar until the winter of 1830 when the Gloucester Town Constable found him curled up in a ball down in his cellar, both his feet severely frostbitten. Constable pulled him out of the cellar hole, took him to Gloucester for treatment, but unfortunately the injuries were just too much and Dogtown's last gasp passed away. Check this out, here's something cool. Look at these pine trees here. See how they're planted in kind of like a grid pattern almost? And a bunch more right here. Notice how we, how we haven't seen like any pine trees like these yet. Look at that, three in a row right there. See? That's because where we're standing right now is an old defunct tree farm called Adam's Tree Farm. A couple sources I read said that the grave of the guy whose tree farm this was, Rain Adams, was somewhere here around the property, but I'm pretty sure that's not true because when I looked at what those sources were citing, it was this old book about uh, Dogtown and the Gloucester Commons. And in that, the guy says, 
the grave of Rain Adams is nearby and that's it. <laughs> and from there, I just kind of got extrapolated into literally nearby as in, in the tree farm. But there's, I looked it up and there's a grave in a cemetery, sort of nearby, but off the Dogtown property for sure, that's marked as Rain Adams. So I don't know, just one of those interesting things you come across when you're doing research, right? Sometimes you gotta look a little deeper than just trusting whatever the first thing you see says. So many random unmarked trails and stuff all over this property. It's crazy. If I didn't have a map, I would get so lost. Dang, I just ate a summer sausage for lunch. And now when I do my scuba divers uh, camera lick trick, I just sausage up the land. All right, so I couldn't find the number for this guy either. Uh, his house is somewhere around here among the overgrowth and rocks. Uh, his name was Abram Warp. Some sources say Abraham Warp, but I'm just gonna say Abram. At one point, Abram was one of the richest men in the commons. Proud owner of the largest flock of sheep on the whole plateau. Unfortunately though, as the commons became Dogtown, Abram's fortune kind of crumbled away. He watched as his flock died and his house fell apart. One day in 1814, after having lost it all, he sat by the fire as a destitute old man, sharpening his razor. His sister sat near him and he turned to her and said, Sister, do you think people who commit suicide go to heaven? I don't know but I hope you will never do such a thing, she replied. Abram then turned, looked his sister right in the eyes, and without even a pang of emotion in his voice, simply said, God forbid. Then he stuck his razor into his shoe, stood up, walked out into the dark, found a big boulder, slit his throat, and crawled under the rock to die. Some say that that boulder that old Abram crawled under can never grow moss again. To this day, it sits somewhere in these woods, bone dry and bare as a desert boulder. All right, here's another one I couldn't find the number of, but I'm pretty confident in this spot right here. It matches up pretty good to the GPS coordinates I got. And I can see an indentation here where the cellar hole might have been and uh, plenty of rocks and boulders thrown around. So pretty sure this is what I'm looking for. And what I'm looking for is one of the most storied houses in Dogtown, uh, called today the Peter Larvey House. You see, uh, Peter lived here during the Commons days until 1775, when he heard that a British warship was out in the harbor preparing to attack Gloucester and raid the town's sheep stock. Larvey grabbed a musket and raced down to the shoreline. A small skirmish broke out with the Gloucester militia shooting off the shore at the ship and the British firing cannon shells back into the town. Uh, one of the shells unfortunately struck and killed our dear friend Peter, one of only two Gloucester citizens who were killed in the attack. Peter now is remembered as the very first resident of the commons or dog town to die in war. Now fast forward a few years well into the dog town era and Peter's house is now occupied by three women, Molly Jacobs, Sarah Phipps Jacobs, and a Mrs. Stanley. Living in the cellar is our dear friend from earlier, Black Neil. He lived here before he moved over to that other house. Apparently he was convinced that the famous pirate Captain Kidd buried his pirate treasure in the cellar of the house. So he spent most of his days down there just digging around in the dirt, searching for the pirate's treasure. Oh, and uh, the three old women who lived upstairs actually had one more person in their house, too. Mrs. Stanley's grandchild, Sammy Stanley. Now, although Sam was born biologically male, he was actually brought up as a woman and dressed exclusively in women's clothes. Once the three older women were eventually moved out to a poor house because they couldn't take care of themselves anymore, Sam took over the house herself. She called herself the local washerwoman and made a living doing Dogtown's laundry. She also used to travel around to the houses of people in Dogtown who had fallen ill. She would just sit in a chair next to the bed and just knit and talk and tell stories to the patient, keep them company, you know? And apparently she also had a friendly relationship with old Ruth, 
Remember her, the free black woman down the street who dressed up as John Woodman to do work in Gloucester? Well, apparently Ruth would also help out Sam whenever she needed some work done around her house. I read one great account where Ruth was helping Sam clean up her garden. While she was doing the landscaping, old Ruth came across one particularly giant boulder. And according to the story, she just bent down, got a good grip, heaved it up onto her shoulder, and then stood up with that giant rock. And then without barely even breaking a sweat, she turned back to Sam and said, Miss Stanley, where do you want I should put this? Check this out. This has got to be the biggest glacial boulder we've got to so far. Kind of shocked Babson didn't write anything on this one. Check it out, here's a very obvious cellar hole. Definitely the deepest one we've got to so far. You can definitely see the indentation here. Probably five or six feet deep. Hey, check it out. Remember earlier I was talking about that dike that was put up to keep the, the rusty swamp out of the reservoir waters? Well, we're literally walking on it right now. Here it is. See, we're about maybe three feet off the ground. But I guess I just turned the dike into the trail. <laughs> Let me get down and show you. See? Like I said, built in 1935. Okay, I didn't have this marked on my map, but... We got to take a detour and go into the swamp here. Oh, totally overflown. You know, this, uh, it's not called this anymore, but back in the day, they used to call this the wine swamp because of that rust color. Trail's getting harder and harder to follow with all these leaves and rocks. Everything just looks the same, even with the little bit of, of a cleared out area where the dirt trail is supposed to go. There's like some light blazes around here too, but not that much. But I've been keeping a real close eye on my map so I don't end up another victim of a granny day swamp. Hey, here's a spot called the Raccoon Ledges. Big giant pile of boulders. Not sure why they were called the raccoon ledges, but this used to be a very popular hangout spot during both the commons and Dogtown era. All right, I gotta pick up the pace now. It's starting to rain even harder and harder, and it's already getting kind of late in the afternoon, so I don't wanna be stuck out here. 
Man, here's a great looking stone wall. Really big rocks on this one. Must have been a lot of work. All right, time to cross our friends the tracks again. This time we don't gotta walk on it, just cross it. Never mind, we do gotta walk down the tracks for a minute. Although this time I actually have somewhere to stand, not just walking over a reservoir. Wow, the trail I'm supposed to go down is literally a swamp, like that's it right there. So I guess we are walking on this for quite a while. Oh my God. Just ran across another swamp with nowhere to hide. Oh, dang. Well, never trusting the trail mapping system that I use for this trip ever again. Well, thank you to whoever put these boards here. Oh. Made it. Hey, you know what? I just checked my map. This stream is actually the site of the first mill in Gloucester. This is one of the places I wanted to go, so we just kind of lucked into it. But yeah, this is a little divergent stream from the water over there. And uh, they used to have a big water wheel right here to power a mill. Look, old beaver pond. See the dam right here? Oh my gosh, I'm so out of breath from sprinting down the train tracks. That was probably a quarter mile, third of a mile sprint maybe. The train came, I would have, <laughs> I would have had to jump down into the swamp. <laughs> hey, look, this tree here is way bigger and older than the others. If you watch one of my videos from a couple weeks ago, you already probably know what this tree is. But if you didn't, make a long story short, it's a pasture tree. When they cleared all the other forest out of here to make room for the pasture, they left a couple like this one to provide shade for the animals. That's why it's so much bigger and older than all the others. Hey, we're almost back out of the state land. You hear all that noise? Cars and, and construction noises and stuff. That's because just on the other side of the camera behind you there is a, a office building, a construction site, a whole bunch of stuff. We're on the edge of Dogtown now. Right here on another moraine. And this moraine here had a certain distinction among the people of Dogtown and the commons. It was called the Lamb's Legends. Similar to Granny Day's Swamp, it was a pretty notorious place that shepherds would want to keep their lambs away from. Uh, because there's a lot of cliffs around here, a lot of big drops, a lot of places a lamb could accidentally walk off. And, you know, I think I'm going to leave you here because I really love this kind of place, you know. It's a spot that was so well known by the folks that lived here that it had its own name. A place that's on maps from way back in the day place that people knew, right? And now it's just a bunch of rocks behind an office building. That's the way she goes. See you next time.